we may have just gotten another leak about QSTAR. And for those of you who haven't heard of QSTAR yet, it's what a lot of people believe is AGI that has been developed internally at OpenAI and may even have preceded Ilya Sutskever starting a mutiny and trying to kick out Sam Altman. We already know QSTAR is a real thing. Sam Altman has confirmed that, and I'll get into that in a moment. But now we have new information about what it is, and it's shaping up to be a continuation of the same things we've been hearing about QSTAR, a brand new way for large language models to operate, which truly would unlock artificial general intelligence. So let's talk about what it is. All right, first, a little bit of a backstory. QSTAR was first heard about a few months ago, right around the time that Sam Altman was temporarily fired from OpenAI. And in fact, he gave an interview in which he was asked about QSTAR and he said no particular comment on that unfortunate leak. So he basically confirmed they're working on something called QSTAR. There's a project called QSTAR, but he's not giving any information away about what it actually is. But we were able to find bits and pieces by scouring the web and some leaks here and there. And the rest of this quote is basically just very media friendly. Hey, I'm not gonna say anything. We're doing a lot of research. We're making a lot of progress. But he did also say in and around that time that he's been in the room only a handful of times in his career where major breakthroughs have occurred. And he said around that time, that that day was one of them. So this could truly be Q star that he's referring to. And all of this happened months ago, and we really haven't heard much since then. And I also want to point out a lot of this is just rumors and speculation, but it's fun to think about and I enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy thinking through what the possibilities are with regards to Q star. So I also want to go over what Q star originally was thought to be. And this is a blog post by Nathan Lambert. And I reviewed it in a previous video about about QSTAR, but let's just rehash it quickly. So some at OpenAI believe QSTAR, pronounced QSTAR, could be a breakthrough in the startup search for what's known as artificial general intelligence, AGI, one of the people told Reuters. OpenAI defines AGI as autonomous systems that can surpass humans and most economically valuable tasks. So back when I made the video about what QSTAR could be, there were really two main pieces to it. One is that it was really good at solving math. And that may seem really basic, but it turns out large language models are not really good at math for the same reason as what the second factor could be of QSTAR, and that is the ability to have broader planning. And planning is something that large language models do not do well. All a large language model is doing is predicting the next token in a sequence of tokens. It's basically a big matrix math problem, and it's trying to figure out what is the most likely next word in a sentence. So being able to plan and have higher level thinking and long-term planning in general is really difficult for large language models to do on their own. There have been a lot of techniques to allow them to basically fake their way into longer-term planning with the use of things like tree of thought and think step-by-step. Step. And all of these are good, but it's basically trying to find a fix for a problem that large language models have inherently. And in a moment, Moment, I'm gonna get to what the new information we just learned is. So stick with me for just a minute while I go over what we've already learned. So there are two main things that Nathan Lambert has pointed out that may be Q star. One is self-play. The idea that an agent can improve its gameplay by playing against slightly different versions of itself because it'll progressively encounter more challenging situations. Now, this isn't anything new. This has been done with systems like AlphaGo and a lot of the work that NVIDIA is doing right now with Dr. Jim Fan's team. So self-play has been around for a while. And with the huge increase in transistors and capabilities and processing power of new chips, the ability to run these simulations over and over again at enormous scale is now possible. And so a lot of people think the key to unlocking AGI is in fact just scale. Now, Jan LeCun doesn't believe that. And I put together a supercut on why he doesn't think that, which I'll show a little brief clip of that right now. Well, it's a big debate among uh, philosophers and also cognitive scientists, like whether intelligence needs to be grounded in reality. Uh, I'm clearly in the camp that uh, yes, uh, intelligence cannot appear without some grounding in uh, some reality. It doesn't need to be, you know, physical reality. It could be simulated, but um, but the environment is just much richer than what you can express in language. Language is a very approximate representation of our percepts and our mental models, right? I mean, there, there's a lot of tasks that we accomplish where we manipulate 
uh, a mental model of uh, of the situation at hand, and that has nothing to do with language. So Jan LeCun, the head of Meta's AI division, doesn't think scale is going to solve the problem. He thinks that language models alone do not have the capabilities to model the world. And he's working on something called JEPA, which is said to be able to model the world along with and parallel with large language models. Now back to self-play. Self-play has been done so we already know about it, and it is really, really powerful for allowing an agent to learn about its environment, whatever environment it's in, without giving it explicit instructions or training. And so that's a really powerful architecture for achieving high intelligence or even AGI. So the second piece of the puzzle for QSTAR is look ahead planning. And that's what we actually found out more about today, which I'll touch on in a second. But for look ahead planning, which current large language models don't do very well at all, is the idea of using a model of the world to reason into the future and produce better actions or outputs. So basically, as a large language model is predicting the next token in a string or the next word in a sentence, it doesn't really have any kind of broader understanding of what it's putting out there. It just tries to predict the next word. So this whole idea of having a broader or higher level understanding of the problem it's being tasked to solve is an important factor in achieving AGI, which maybe large language models in their current state can't do, but maybe that's what QSTAR aims to solve. So the idea of using a model of the world to reason into the future and produce better actions or outputs, the two variants are based on on model predictive control, which is often used on continuous states, and Monte Carlo tree search, which works with discrete actions and states. Okay, just a few weeks ago, March 1st, we have Jimmy Apples, a prolific leaker and somebody who has been accurate about different leaks and things coming from OpenAI multiple times, said there was a lot going to be planned QSTAR plus model update before they released 5, that's GPT-5, and now this lawsuit crap referring to Elon Musk lawsuit against OpenAI, and I made a whole video about that, I'll drop the link to that in the description, is going to put a delay on this until legal gives a green light. Anyways, I'm going to be binging one of those Disco Elysium Dark Outer Wilds again over the weekend. So that's what Jimmy Apple said just a few weeks ago. Now the last thing I want to show you before I actually show you the leak is Jan LeCun posted just about a week ago, to people who claim thinking and reasoning require language, here is a problem. Now I want you to think about this, this is really interesting. Jan LeCun's position is is that language is not enough to understand the world, to actually set up a world model. And here is an example that he gives. And I want you to think about this as I say this. Imagine standing at the North Pole of the Earth. Walk in any direction in a straight line for one kilometer. Now turn 90 degrees to the left. Walk as long as it takes to pass your starting point. And he asks the question, have you walked more than two times pi kilometers, exactly two times pi kilometers, less than two times pi kilometers, or I never came close to my starting point. And it's not really whether you get the answer right or wrong that he's trying to show, it's how you think about it. When you are thinking about this problem, and really this is just a spatial reasoning problem, he's basically saying you didn't really use any language to figure it out. You have a mental model of the world and you used spatial reasoning to figure out what the answer is to this problem. And he's right, but I don't know if that necessarily means language is not enough. Now, thinking through the problem, if we start at point X, we walk in any direction for a kilometer, we turn left, and then we walk as long as it takes to pass our starting point, we would never pass our starting point. And so that's the answer right here. I never came close to my starting point. So I'm gonna paste this into ChatGPT and just see if we can get it right, just for another angle on this discussion. So I pasted it in and it says right here, less than two times pi kilometers, which, you know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but if I walk in one direction, turn left and continue walking, I will never have passed my original starting point because I need to make two left turns to come back around. So ChatGPT got this wrong. And I think that's Jan's point. Okay, now for the leak. This was leaked to an unspecified paste bin and we cannot confirm the authenticity. It's from an unknown source. And this is from somebody with Twitter handle AI for success. So let's go over this new information. And it's really all about planning, higher level planning for large language models. So first, QSTAR is a dialogue system conceptualized by OpenAI designed to enhance the traditional dialogue generation approach through the implementation of an energy-based model. So 
This is a little bit foreign to me. I don't actually know what energy-based model is, so let's find out. So I asked ChatGPT, what is an energy-based model? So let's read here. Energy-based models in artificial intelligence are a class of models that learn to associate a scalar energy value with each configuration of the variables of interest. These models are defined by an energy function which maps each possible configuration of the input variables to a single number, the energy. So if I'm understanding this correctly, what it basically means is it kind of understands the total possible solutions to a problem and weighs each one trying to find the path of least resistance before actually proposing the solution. And I'm going to actually ask it to break it down for a fourth grader because that might be easier for me. But let's continue on. The main idea is that configurations of variables that are more probable or more correct are assigned lower energies, while less probable configurations are assigned higher energies. Inference in these models often involves finding the configuration of variables that minimizes the energy, and learning involves adjusting the parameters of the model so that correct configurations have lower energy than correct ones. All right, so I asked it to explain it like I'm a fourth grader. Imagine your toy box is like a game where each way of arranging your toys has a score. In this game, the best ways to organize your toys get low scores because they fit perfectly, and the not so good ways get high scores because things just don't fit right. And so they're saying that's basically what an energy-based model is. Okay, back to the leak. So now that we understand what an energy-based model is to the best of our ability, distinct from prevalent autoregressive token prediction methods, that is our current current way of doing large language models that is basically saying just predict the next token. QSTAR aims to mimic a form of internal deliberation akin to human thought processes during complex problem solving, such as chess playing, where a deeper analysis of potential moves leads to better decision making compared to rapid, less considered responses. So interesting. So again, it's more of understanding the total universe of potential answers, weighing them against each other before actually providing the answer. This model shifts focus towards the inference of latent variables, reminiscent of constructs in probabilistic models and graphical models, fundamentally altering how, how dialogue systems operate. So energy-based model for dialogue generation. At the core of QSTAR is the EBM, which operates by assessing the compatibility of an answer to a a given prompt through a scalar output. The output signifies the energy of the response, where a lower value indicates a higher compatibility, the better answer, and a higher value suggests low compatibility, a poor answer. This mechanism allows QSTAR to evaluate potential responses holistically, moving beyond the sequential prediction of tokens to understand the underlying relevance and appropriateness of an answer to the prompt. So again, just being able to plan, being able to think through what are the different options we have here before presenting the solution. And that is a drastic drastic difference from how large language models operate today. They have no thinking. They're just predicting. They're saying, okay, based on everything I've seen, all the tokens, all the prompts you give me, what's the next most likely token to give in the sequence of tokens? So the leak goes on. Optimization in abstract representation space. The innovation in QSTAR lies in its optimization process, conducted not within the space of possible text strings, but in an abstract representation of space. So again, not just looking at language. And this is the reason why I showed you Jan LeCun's take on language being enough to form a world model. So QSTAR is moving beyond just language. Here, thoughts or ideas are represented in a form that allows for the computational minimization of EBM scalar output, akin to finding the path of least resistance in a landscape. So it still involves gradient descent, which is the main way that machine learning has worked for a while now. A method for finding the minimum of a function applied to iteratively refine these abstract representations toward those that yield the lowest energy in relation to the prompt. Okay, so this next section talks about how to take these abstract thoughts and we still need to deliver a text-based response, so how does it do that? Once an optimal abstract representation, one that minimizes the EBM's output is identified, QSTAR employs an autoregressive decoder to transform this abstract thought into a coherent 
textual response. So this is the bridge between non-linguistic conceptual understanding and the linguistic output required for human interaction. Now it talks about training the system. So the EBM within QSTAR is trained using a pairs of prompts and responses, which I thought was interesting because that's the traditional way. Adjusting the system's parameters to minimize the energy for compatible pairs while ensuring that incompatible pairs result in higher energy levels. So it just goes on to talk more about the training method, but I don't really find this all too interesting. So let's keep going. So now the implications. QSTAR's approach, leveraging EBMs for dialogue generation, represents a significant departure from traditional language modeling techniques by optimizing over an abstract representation space. And that's really the key innovation of this leak, at least. And utilizing gradient-based inference, QSTAR introduces a more efficient, reasoned, and potentially more powerful method for generating dialogue responses. And then technical considerations, QSTAR's effectiveness hinges on the intricacies of its EBM, the optimization landscape it navigates, and the accuracy of its abstract representations. The model's capacity to simulate deep reasoning akin to human deliberation sets a new benchmark for dialogue systems. So that's the new information we have. It's a little bit more than we've had before. I find it very fascinating. It is truly a new way that large language models would operate, but it still converts itself to being text at the end of the solution. Now, all of this came from the r slash singularity subreddit. And here's the leak, but all of the comments say clearly written by GPT, definitely BS, ignore, complete BS, obviously written by AI. It may all be rumors, but conceptually speaking, if this is actually true, and even just a portion of it is true, it is quite powerful and would actually allow traditional large language models to achieve AGI, where previously, and Jan LeCun believes, large language models alone can't do it. And here's the person who actually tipped me off that there was a new QSTAR leak. This is uh, by the username Chubby. Because QSTAR is going viral again, and there are so many uncertainties or even false statements, I recommend everyone to watch a great video about QSTAR by Matthew Berman. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. And they go on to reference the STAR paper. But before I dive into the STAR paper, let me just read a couple other things by Chubby. QSTAR is not a myth, it's not magic, it's a scientific approach to teaching LLMs to think and reason. It's an algorithm that teaches AI to think human-like about complex things, teaches itself and finds the best answer. It uses a similar approach to AlphaGo, utilizing a step-by-step -step chain of thought process. And so Chubby's take on this is that QSTAR is actually just a way to teach large language models to think. So think about step-by-step -step reasoning, chain of thought, and these are all really just sophisticated prompt techniques. So I don't know if that's true or not, but that is what Chubby is saying here. And here is the STAR paper, which came out in 2022, so well before anyone had really heard of QSTAR out of OpenAI. And this is from the uh, University of Stanford and Google Research. This paper is all about generating step-by-step -step chain of thought rationale, but being able to teach an LLM about how to do that is very difficult. So they propose, we propose a technique to iteratively leverage a small number of rationale examples and a large data set without rationales to bootstrap the ability to perform successively more complex reasoning. And so they are a self-taught reasoner and it relies on a simple loop, generate rationales to answer many questions prompted with a few rationale examples. So let's look at one example. What can be used to carry a small dog? Answer choices, swimming pool, basket, dog show, backyard, own home. So the answer must be something that can be used to carry a small dog. Baskets are designed to hold things, therefore the answer is basket. So this is just an example of the path it takes. So we have the question put into the large language model, it generates the rationale and then an answer. Then if it has the correct answer, it provides the rationale and the answer. And if the answer is wrong, it gives a hint and then goes on to try again with rationale and answer. And so with this technique, it's basically just teaching the large language model how to think iteratively, but it's not actually using a new architecture, which is what this leak is saying. And on this topic, I wanna to talk about something that was posted by 
Eric Zellickman, and this is something called Quiet Star. So maybe just a coincidence that it's Quiet Star, Q Star, but let's get into it. This Quiet Star technique takes kind of the same approach. It's teaching a large language model how to think, how to take its time and think through problems rather than just responding. But again, not truly using a new architecture altogether. Language models today are trained to reason either generally imitating online reasoning data or narrowly self-teaching on their own solutions to specific tasks. Can language models teach themselves to reason generally? Introducing Quiet Star, self-teaching via internal monologue. So here's how it works according to Eric. Reasoning is everywhere in text, just hidden between the lines. That's because people often think of before they speak. So LMs can learn to reason from diverse online text if they reason about what text is next, see if the thought helped and learn from useful thoughts. And so really what this is doing is just giving kind of a meta language to large language models to teach them how to think in between their predictions. And so that's what we're seeing here with this start thought, end thought, and these may not or could be output in the prompt in the response itself, but this is kind of a language within the large language model that it can use to think through things. And this quiet star, which this paper just came out about a week ago, or actually just a couple days ago, is a generalization of the star technique, which we just touched on, and in which language models learn to generate rationales at each token to explain future text, improving their predictions. And what we're seeing here are two benchmarks. We have the GSM 8K and the Common Sense QA. And we can see as more thought, quote unquote thought, is given to the model, the better they are able to perform. And the nice thing about this is it can pretty much be applied to any existing language model. This isn't, again, some new architecture that we're going to have to build new systems for. So I'll drop a link to this paper in the description below. I'm not gonna get too much more into it because it is pretty complex, but that is the gist as I understand it. And look at the performance, a couple exciting updates. First, we quantitatively evaluated the improvement from combining Quiet Star with Chain of Thought, and it improves zero shot chain of thought accuracy on GSM AK by over 7%. That's a great improvement. And not only that, you can actually download the Quiet Star model so you could play with it yourself. Everything is open source, not only the code. So second, we've open sourced the code and the weights for the model. So here's the Quiet Star GitHub repo. I'll drop this in the description. And here is the Quiet Star 8 Ahead model card. And I will also drop that in the description. And Eric Hartford coming in with, is there a model on Hugging Face? And then Eric provided it. So Eric might be fine tuning this model himself soon. So I can't wait for that. So what do you think? Do you think this is legit? Do you think Q-Star is gonna be GPT-5 or GPT-5 is gonna be Q-Star in some way? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.